Leopard sharks are a very beautiful species of shark. Firstly, they're unique. There are no other species that they're very closely related to. The skin of the leopard shark, apart from being very interesting with its patterns, it's also very, very thick. It's like amazing sandpaper. The other thing that's unusual about them is that they have a very long single lobed tail. Single lobe is typical of things that live on the bottoms. So one of the things from a conservation perspective, this means that if you get rid of leopard sharks, there's not really anything else that's very similar to them to replace them. So what's really interesting here at North Stradbrook Island is that there is a population of zebra sharks that is part of the population that's doing quite well, despite what we know about zebra sharks in other parts of the world. So this population here provides us a really unique opportunity to learn more about the species. Right now, what we're interested in is we are trying to understand more about the diet of these animals, about their reproductive biology, and also potentially where they are laying their eggs. And so the types of data that we're collecting are uh, swabs of uh, essentially poo samples so that we can examine their diet. We collect blood um, from the animals that also gives us information about diet, but also reproduction with hormones. And we've also inserted acoustic tags uh, into three animals on this trip to enable us to do that tracking of their longer movements. This is where we can really get a handle on what it's supposed to be like in the wild in order to inform what we're doing in Rajampa. We had our wonderful vet team from SeaWorld join us to help perform some of the surgeries. So the procedure involves a small incision being made in the abdominal cavity and a small tag is placed or inserted in there. Uh, and that has a lifespan of about 10 years. So that animal, when it passes through any of the acoustic array and will know where he or she has been for that time period. It's challenging, particularly in the conditions today where we had quite rough seas and uh, low visibility. But um, yeah, again, we had a great team supporting it and uh, it was just wonderful. And, and I loved when we get the, the animals actually back to the boat to see Lisa in her element, you know, pulling blood and doing cloacal swabs and all. It just, it was, it made it really worthwhile. I'm so proud and so excited that it, it went off without a hitch uh, and we were able to tick all of the boxes that we wanted to tick for this trip. And I'm really proud and happy and excited and I hope that we get to do this again in the future. Yeah. <laughs> so this has really been a fantastic and ultra productive two days and it's been wonderful to have such a great collaboration. I think everybody at the aquarium was really excited about the prospect of doing this kind of work. I think all of us feel deep down like, yeah, this is what aquariums should do, right? We can share animals with the public and share the wonder of getting to know animals with the public. It's been designed as a consortium from the beginning and it took people from Indonesia with their local expertise, people from aquariums with their expertise to put it all together. But we're unified by purpose. We all want to see the same thing, which is we want to see the leopard shark swimming back in the waters of Raja Ampat. And so that's really easy to unify when everybody agrees on the mission. It doesn't matter who we work for, we're all able to drive towards that same goal. Ultimately, what we would like to see is that where these animals are occurring, that, that there's a bigger impact for their habitat as well. So we can have that spatial protection because these animals live in an ecosystem where things all depend upon each other. Uh, so I'd like to see that we are successful with this rewilding project, that uh, we can go back in several years and see wild leopard sharks swimming around um, in these sites. And we'd also like to extend this to other places where the leopard sharks uh, used to be in good numbers and have also been depleted. This is gonna be the year that we really ramp things up. We already have 24 eggs in route to uh, Rajampat right now. And um, most importantly, some of our aquarium partners who have been struggling for a while to get eggs going are suddenly having viable eggs. So we've got Georgia Aquarium coming online, SeaWorld Gold Coast coming online, Sydney's coming back online. We've got some European members as well. 
So we are at the first embryo stage for the STAR project. So we have three leopard sharks. We have one male named Romeo. We have our adult female named Juliet, and then we have a sub-adult female named Indy. We have been getting eggs for the last year, one with a developing embryo, and we're really excited to see how the other two eggs develop from here. At Sea Life Sydney Aquarium, we have some superstars. We have a breeding population of the zebra shark, or Stegostoma tigrinum, and we actually have Kaya and Zimba, and our male Gohan, successfully bred to produce eggs that were fertile, and they were the very first eggs to go to Raja Empat. It takes up to 30 days to know if, if it's even going to be a viable egg because the yolk can stay very healthy. And then if it's not fertile, it will diffuse. Uh, so it is a long waiting game. And then of course the eggs take almost 150 days to fully develop before they hatch. I anticipate that we're going to have a really wonderful dilemma this year, which is what do we do with all the eggs that we have? So I think that that's, it, it's the time that we're gonna really hit full stride. He's giving me the okay, he's going now.